Unless you know everything about the situation that you're being thrown into, it's almost impossible to not have at least one other person helping you. Commonly referred to as your eyes in the skies, or a more modern version would be the guy in the chair, the person who's always speaking to the field operative and telling them more than what a GPS would do. There's one such character that took that term to heart, even though they really didn't ask for it, that being the big brain turtle who always does his math right, Bentley. I still can't believe that Bentley created character development in video games, it's crazy. As well as being the first character you hear in the series, Sly being the oh so second. Though it feels a bit weird as I type this up because it feels like Bentley, as he always does, speaks for himself. However, I will still go through who he is, what he's done, and why he's great. Let me get something pretty interesting out of the way first. So, at the ending cutscene of episode 4 in slide 2, we see this picture here, which appears to be a relative to Bentley of some kind, hints towards a sister or mother, which would seem like a plot hole, because our three main boys all met up at an orphanage. However, through extra information from the strategy guide of the game, apparently Bentley wandered off from his family because of his poor vision, and Mrs. Puffin, the person who ran the orphanage, found him and assumed that he just had no family and kept them there. Sounds pretty screwed up, but given Bentley's intelligence and tracking skills, I'm pretty sure he's reunited with his family, or at least one of them, but by that time, he had already decided to stay with Sly and Murray. Which is probably why we don't really see or hear much from them, like, at all. That was a small tidbit I thought that would be neat to share. Anyways, on to the games. So immediately, starting the series from the first game, less than 5 minutes in, you can already get a feel for what Bentley's character is. Yelling into your ear, making sure that everything is being done step by step. The rather timid, scared guy who's always behind the scenes, helping Sly. He knows it all, or will know it all, when it comes to where Sly will be going, how to do it, everything. They usually say that the cards are in someone's hand, but Bentley carries the whole damn deck, just in case. He'll have no problem pointing Sly in the right direction, but that pessimistic mindset of his definitely gets in the way of what needs to be done. But we have to thank him, because without him, we wouldn't have some of the best quotes in the series. Behold the majesty of gravity and inertia. Now really, Sly, I'm serious. The Contessa has a giant attack robot. It just looks like a water tower. Viacom Dios! Look away if you must. You're about to witness the dark side of electrical engineering. Enough with the sauce, Agate! Nasty with the scuba! Yo, with bling! La Another falls before my digital kung fu! Hi -ya 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 -ya. Your mother was a broken down tub of junk with more gentlemen callers than the operator. And the most famous quote being, say it with me now, jump and press the sure button. As Sly ventures through sociopathic criminals' home turf, there finally comes a moment where Bentley had to give more than just guidance and tell Sly the best option. He actually used his hacker man powers to the test and stopped Sly from dying, basically, from clockwork. He truly did come through. Though, similar to Murray, seeing Sly be the one to jump around all over the place, it feels like he's not giving it 100%. There's potential in him. He could do more. Bentley wants and eventually needs to unlock it to have things run efficiently for Sly and Murray since they're both going out into the field now. Well, what better way to do so than actually getting out into the field yourself? When the Cairo Museum heist happened, he was doing it. He was moving around and everything. Hot wiring elevators, which I didn't know you could do. Hacking the systems. Getting chased by the police alongside Sly and Murray. It sounds like the climax of a movie, but I have to remind myself that it was ultimately a failure because they didn't get the clockwork pieces all in one fell swoop like they wanted. Which leads into the plot of the second game, find and steal the clockwork pieces from the Claw Gang. And things were going pretty smoothly, and Bentley was slowly gaining more confidence for each job that centered around him, because to be fully prepared, he equipped himself with a handful of things, the first being able to make anything go boom. Did somebody say boom? 
you know, with bombs. I don't know where he gets them from or how he makes them, but it works, so no complaints. But due to his limited height and size, the bombs he throws aren't really going anywhere with much finesse. He's no shot put champion. And if only the enemies would stay still too, well, that's where his trusty sleep darts come in. Put them to sleep temporarily, and then put them to sleep permanently. And then he also brings forth his powers as a hacker, being able to hack computers and systems like no tomorrow. That's quite the upgrade from just sitting in a chair most of the time. However, a lot of that would be put to the test by episode 4, Jailbreak. Murray just kicked the ass of an international drug lord and stole his shit. The gang and Carmelita are rewarded by being sent to jail. Oh, did I say reward? I meant incarcerated. I sometimes... <laughs> I sometimes get the words confused. <laughs> My bad. But not Bentley. He's alone, stuck, lost, and without the family he grew up with. Now what? Well, Bentley portrays the game's biggest theme, loyalty and trust. As we constantly see Neela backstab every person that she gets in eye contact with, Bentley is now in a position where he has the option to abandon his friends. It was fun while it lasted, I guess, but a real homie would take days without sleep tracking down your whereabouts, travel to another country, and go to the most haunted place that is home to the giant enemy spider. And the hardest thing of all? learn how to drive a stick shift. You take a small guy like Bentley and throw him into the dark areas of Prague with bats and werewolves and vultures and everything, physically the weakest member being placed in a terrifying area like this. It's pretty nuts. But despite the train with no conductor, statues that can come to life and nearly kill you, and a water tower attack robot, yes it's real, and a fucking tank from the the T word, Bentley did it. He rescued Sly and Murray, not his teammates, nor even his friends, but brothers. And without his brains, his brothers would be totally lost. And we've seen a glimpse of what that's like. Even though the Cooper gang stopped Neela's plans of becoming immortal and more, with Bentley stealing the last and most important part from Clockwork's body, Neela sure is a petty bitch, because she more or less gets the last laugh by having the metallic head of said body crush Bentley, which tragically caused him to be paralyzed from the waist down. The biggest change in the entire Sly Cooper franchise, Bentley was no longer able to walk, and you would think that would be the end of his story. It wrapped up pretty nicely, started off being the guy who didn't want to step outside, a real hermit let me tell you. then he became more confident from the Claw Gang adventures and steals the final item. It's really nice. Though, a few weeks afterwards, he was of course hospitalized, but as Sly and Murray try to simply visit him with the purpose of telling him he's important, Bentley was surprisingly okay with the situation in a way. It took a while for him to get used to it, but it didn't really hold him back. I always jokingly say this, but it's rather crazy that him being put in the wheelchair made him more mobile. Gameplay-wise, at least, but in a weird parallel way, also shows his conviction was steadfast. He doesn't really see himself being in the chair too much of a weakness, just a minor inconvenience of anything. Now he takes pride in forming plans that have two opposing forces fight against each other, instead of the gang fighting both of them. Shit, that was the whole plan constantly throughout episode 3 in the third game. He's fine being who he is, and when Bentley has a genuine one-on-one -on -one talk with Murray after the accident, he just straight up tells him the absolute theme of Sly 3. Forgiveness and moving on. Bentley even helps other members overcome their problems and allows them to be at peace with themselves. Penelope being a huge example, even though I just said all that, Sly was the one to initially give Penelope the push to being herself, but she was still being rather fake in a way. With her crush on Sly, she was really only seeing him for what he can do. It's super cool that he can do all this athletic shit, right? But it's not really something that she can relate with. That's why episode 5 serves to be a great episode for her and Bentley. The job dynamic duo is awesome, as it shows Bentley really giving his thoughts on what he's been really feeling for a while now. A bit of jealousy has been brewing in him admittedly, and his thoughts on the chair, but Penelope is there to reinsure him. All fine and dandy, too bad she gets kidnapped less than a day later. But as always, it's up to Bentley to come up with a 40 chess plan to screw over some guy. And it kinda worked for most of the plan, 
even though they had to improvise in its last act, with Penelope killing Lafui and getting Bentley as a boyfriend. Hey, if your girl is not willing to kill for you, then she might not be the one, bro. Just saying. And they have fun chemistry with their nerdy talk. However, things may have been going smoothly for Bentley for a minute or so. Dr. M tried planting the seeds of doubt in his mind by telling him that only being the brains of the operation will get you no respect or appreciation. And I mean, I know some people absolutely disagree with what Dr. M is doing and what his philosophy, I guess you could call it, but I mean, he's not technically wrong to a degree, because, you know, Bentley and Murray and all the other new members of the Cooper gang risked their lives to help Sly throughout his time as a thief and ultimately get to the vault, but they don't really get anything else in return. However, Bentley soon understood that at least keeping Sly alive and safe is more important and valuable than a vault full of treasure. Why? Because he's his brother. And what's the point of having all that treasure if you can't share it with the people who you really treasure the most? Bentley's final act was shaping the future, creating a new Cooper vault that represented the family that founded it one final time, sealing the deal with Penelope, and making sure Sly was safe one last time. He's a character that has an ironic roundabout life, starts off as a guy in the chair, and then forever becomes the guy in the chair, but from those moments in his life, he grew to be the most reliable person in the series. He's shown his loyalty and fortitude of overcoming a weakness. That's who Bentley is, and why he is super awesome. So while this might be the end of our adventures together, it could be the start of something even bigger. Time will tell. Literally. Cause I'm building a time machine to find out. And that is the video on Bentley. Or Bentley the turtle. Not really sure. They don't really give last names to these guys. Like, you know, Cooper or... Uh, <laughs> Montoya Fox, but uh, yeah, that's Bentley. He is probably like one of the best. Now, nah, what am I even saying? That, there's no doubt in my mind. He is like the best character besides, well, you know, the person that I'll be doing next, but you guys all know who that is. Rajan, of course, but yeah. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments below. Uh, you know what to do with all the links that I provide and everything of the sort. Thank you for watching. That's greatly appreciated, of course. Have a great day. Have a great night and everything else you know what to do.